Hello there, my fellow big game hunters, and welcome back to some 40k lore. In today's entry on our lengthy coverage of the Liber Xenologus, I wanted to go over a particular story told to Captain Drake by a Katakan jungle fighter. That's gonna be the main attraction, but I also wanted to go over an entry where Captain Drake himself gives us some hunting advice. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? On the Trail of Chensu I once asked the wretched jungle fighter, Ledgood Kircher, what kind of Xenos he considered to be the most dangerous. His reply was like tank treads grinding rubble. The last enemy. The last enemy? Chensu. She hunts down in the Salvas Delta, always has. There have been stories of Chensu since the first settlers arrived on Katakan. Killer of killers, queen of the jungle. There is no hunter more deadly. More deadly than any other alpha predator? I face quite a few of those myself. You can't imagine her, Terran. The biggest of the big cats, armored in bony plates like a lizard. He made a strange, involuntary growling sound that seemed to emanate from his guts. He seemed unaware that he was doing it. And she's black as pitch. If you see her, you only see the eyes. Unless you live long enough to see her insides. And one of these creatures found you? Attacked you? I found her. The Salvas Delta is guarded by the Katagan Twelve, or it's supposed to be. The Twelve manned it for three centuries, and nothing ever broke through those stockades. But as I took my squad back to the Ilaro barracks, we heard that the Salvas Bastion had fallen. The last enemy had finally tired of their presence in her lands and butchered a lot of them. We were closest, so I went to see what we could do. Without a bastion to stop it, the jungle would take back control of the entire delta. It was a bad situation. We were nowhere near the bastion when we began to see that it was already too late. The jungle attacked us with even more confidence than before. Man traps, strangle plants, mammomorphs, blood wasps, everything it had. They took us down one by one, crushing, burning, eating, until every one of my men was gone. I realized there was no way I would be able to take back the Bastion alone. HQ called me back to Ilaro to wait for reinforcements. He leant across the table, eyes burning. But I wasn't going back, not after what she had done. Every one of my men dead because of her. I was going to make Chensu pay. I headed down the banks of the Scythe and that was when the Grocs began to stampede ripping trees up like the world was ending. They broke my ribs and my jaw and took off one of my ears, but I got in the water before they did anything serious. The damn scourge eels took half my blood, but I had enough stims to keep my heart going. I reached the opposite bank and headed down into the valley where the bastion was. He paused for another drink and made the strange grunting sound again. I knew pretty quick that something didn't add up. There were burn holes in the jungle, great strips of forest just gone. Only explosives or burners could have done it. Then when I started to find the corpses of the Twelve, I spotted something else that didn't make sense. Chenzo will tear your guts and eat your head, but she's not gonna shoot you. Half the bodies I found were hit by explosive rounds, and the others had wounds that looked like they came from chainsaws rather than teeth. I told HQ that they better bring a lot of men, and then I headed on to the bastion, keeping my head down as I got close to the walls. The anger was back in his eyes, but I sensed it wasn't directed at me. I walked right into them. He glared at his empty cup. I handed him my drink. Who? Greenskins. Orcs? He nodded. It wasn't Chensu at all. The report said that she had been spotted in the region, but I walked straight into a dozen greenskins who were busy stripping a chimera for parts. They opened fire as I started shouting at them. You shouted at them? Damn right. I was furious. 
He waved at a mess of puckered scars across his chest. I took some hits, but I was too angry to notice. He lifted a necklace from his munition belt. It was a string of huge yellow incisors. I was too angry to kill them properly. I should have made them suffer. But I wasn't thinking straight. I gunned them down like I was hunting grocks. You killed them all? He made the strange rumbling, growling sound again, and I realized it was laughter. No, I didn't kill them all. Thought I had, though. Like an idiot. So I walked out into the middle of the bastion landing platform and started looking around. Then I figured out how the greenskins had made such a mess of the place. As I walked past the thrashed lander, a whole mob of them attacked. He twisted around to show me his massive back. It was covered in even more puckered scars. Took a few more hits before I got into cover. Once I was hunkered down by the lander, I started landing shots of my own. But there were so many of them. I made an impressive pile of bodies, but I was nearly out of ammo. And the whole time I was fighting, I kept catching sight of someone watching from the other side of the river, hidden in the trees. I guess it was the leader, waiting like a coward for me to go down before he came to make the final kill. Seemed spineless for a greenskin, but I guess it was one of the runty ones. Kircher paused, looking into the middle distance. And then it happened. What happened? I fired my last few rounds and the orcs started climbing up onto the platform, leering and banging their weapons on their scrappy armor. I'd given them quite the runaround so they were baying like dogs as they came at me. I had one last trick though. He grinned, revealing a mess of broken teeth. I had a frag grenade in my fist with the pin out and the lever down. Once they got close I'd see how many I could take down with me. I leant nearer, gripped by the man's story. But you didn't use the grenade, or you wouldn't be here right now. What did you do? He slumped back in the chair with another grumbling laugh. I did nothing. It was her. I was moments away from being shrapnel when she leapt out of the trees and butchered the lot of them. Who? Chansu. She was glorious, as big as a chimera. Scales glinting in the muzzle flashes, barbed tail lashing like a serpent, jaws gaping and... He paused, eyes wide. And that roar, I've never heard anything like it. So this reptilian cat killed the greenskins? Every last one. She didn't even notice their shots. It was carnage. Then, when she ripped them apart, she padded over to me and stared into my eyes. Right into my eyes, like she was looking into my soul. I've been face to face with apex predators before, and I could picture the scene so vividly that my heart was racing. So, she saved you. She watched you fighting and decided you were worth saving. He kept looking into the middle distance, nodding vaguely. And then he registered what I said. Bah, save me! He laughed. Are you joking? On Catacan? Of course she didn't bloody save me. He held up his metal hand. She ripped half my arm off, and then she started to eat me. But you're alive. He nodded, looking around the bar. The grenade was still in my hand. Once she'd bitten my hand off, the lever popped. I rolled clear, but there was no need. The armor trapped the blast in her body. Didn't help her innards, though. The stuff that sprayed out of her nostrils looked worse than my rations. On The Art of the Hunt As I have stated elsewhere in this volume, I have no time for the idleness of the sportsman. Those dissolute souls hunting for pleasure, as, all around them, their fellows fight for their very lives. Maybe I sound petty, but let me explain why the subject causes me such ire. I have crossed the galaxy seeking knowledge of the races that inhabit it. This is not an idle pursuit or vain fancy. I do it because I believe it is the only chance to win the great battle of wills in which we are engaged. With this in mind, I shall now share what I have learned of Zeno's hunting. 
One must not submit to base callous instinct, but the galaxy is a crude and predatory place, and I found myself in countless situations where deploying armed forces or engaging in diplomacy have not been an option. Often I've had to rely on cunning and physical strength to survive. I am working on a plan to publish a separate folio covering this topic, but for now I shall provide a few key points on the hunting of Xenos. Every species has unique habits and idiosyncrasies. Before reaching an unfamiliar environment, do all that you can to acquaint yourself with the native flora and fauna. Study the migratory patterns, geology and seasonal variations, so there is little that can surprise you. This may seem like drudgery, more suited to your advisors, but the only way to retain knowledge is to seek it yourself. To shirk this is to invite disaster. While crossing the Aducan plains of Orationis, I observed a stampede of ruminants and knew from my studies that their panic behavior indicated the approach of a predator called a Fulda, the very beast I had come to slay. Knowing that the Fulda is blind and hunts by scent, I felt pleased with myself as I hid inside a blasted trunk of a heavily scented Caturgis tree and prepared to take my shot. If I had been more thorough in my preparation, I would have known that Fulda is actually the plural of Fuld. I had misunderstood my commission entirely and spent the next few hours in a desperate battle with dozens of the wretched creatures. At his core, a good hunter must have an encyclopedic grasp of tracking technique. There are countless ways to find a trail of Xeno's prey, whatever environment one finds himself in. Even in the bleak pits of the Blackstone Fortress, I am able to utilize my skills. Urguls, for example, may seem impossible to hunt, looping easily through the absolute blackness and using their finely tuned organs to catch the scent of a stalker. As with the Fulda of the Aducan Plains, however, their blindness can be exploited, in conjunction with their feverish bloodlust, of course. I carry on myself at all times a cut of fresh bloody meat with an explosive charge soon inside. At the first sound of an Urgul attack, I learned long ago to recognize the snort of their grotesque nostrils, I unpack the bloody meat, retreat to a safe vantage point, and wait for the inevitable explosion. At which point I am able to pick off the dazed survivors with my splinter pistol. On several occasions my hunting companions have viewed me with wonder, as I locate a prey that eluded them previously. I have been accused of having some kind of psychic ability, but the truth is far more mundane. I have made myself an expert in the scat of Xeno's predators. For example, only recently on the Blackstone Fortress, I saw a pale, chalky, tubular shape on the floor, which contained fragments of human skin and teeth. My attaché, Zola, thought it was the corpse of a small creature, but I recognized it immediately as the droppings of a prey, a slip. I was able to follow the pale shapes until I found a vault containing the serpentine killer. All in all, there are no shortcuts of becoming a successful Xenos hunter. One has to study and train obsessively for years before even considering stalking such lethal prey. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to narrate for you today with the story on the trail of Chensu, as well as some actual common sense hunting advice from Captain Drake. Don't know about you, but I'm actually kinda sad that there's no official artwork for that super powerful reptilian cat from the story. Or maybe that is an alien animal we read about before, but for some reason I'm not recognizing it. The peer cat comes to mind, but this thing was supposed to be a lot bigger, so who knows. Anyway, as usual, do share your opinions or impressions on these stories in the comments below if you want. And do leave a like, share and subscribe if you found this entertaining. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and have a healthy and awesome day. The Emperor protects.